Hey guys, Dave and Jamie from Photo Jeepers. We are here to continue our photo tips composition basics series. And today we're going to talk about <laughs> horizon line. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. So talk about horizon line. Yeah. Um, all these photos come from our free photography journey, your photography journey, free Facebook group. Say that fast five times, three times. Yeah. Um, so thank you in advance to all of them who were willing to share that. We have a weekly challenge and, uh, these are some of the photos they submitted, and so we're going to use them to talk about the concept of Horizon Line. So let's start with Andre. I'll let you start. This is a beautiful photograph where he has chosen to put the the Horizon Line below the lower grid on the say if we're applying the rule of thirds, imaginarily imaginary rule of thirds grid to this photograph. He's placed the Horizon Line down below the lower grid. And what this accomplishes is it allows him to emphasize this magnificent sky that he's captured in this image. And uh, so we've got a nice foreground element there, but uh, room is left to bring in as much of that awesome cloud formation and the, what is the subject of this photograph into it. Yeah, it's done a good job. So using <clears throat> that, uh, you know, a low horizon, putting it down below, that is what accentuates the subject that's above the horizon and you know that's usually skies things like trees buildings um, so james griffin did that here and he's used that colorful sky to help you know kind of make these silhouettes of these trees pop yeah. so the subject here is nice and prominent um, because he's used and chose to put that horizon line in a low position on you know the the photo so really nice on that, um, and I, I love the way that James filled the frame with this. And again, didn't take this, you know, didn't try to get the entire scene. He's just filling the frame with those two trees. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. And here's another example of utilizing a low uh, horizon line to emphasize a sky structure and some other elements, some taller elements in in the scene that is photographed. Beautiful photograph. Who was it that shot this? This is Bonnie. Oh, that, yep. that looks like Bonnie. Yeah. Beautiful capture by Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie uses her cell phone, and I like that she uh, did the vertical orientation so that we could, you know, get that whole concept of things above the horizon. And the uh, leading line here, taking our eye kind of through the scene as well. Yeah. You know, some really nice elements that she has used there. Um, another one from Andre, where he chose to put the horizon along the top, because when we do that, then we're uh, focusing on things that are in the foreground that are, you know, below that horizon. And this is the Grand Prismatic uh, at Yellowstone, and you definitely want to yeah. highlight the color and what you're seeing in this location, and not worry about what's above it, because it's just blue sky. That's not exciting. What's exciting is what's in, in front of it. Yeah, and it's really a, a good way to minimize that uh, a big bland sky, but still capture some of the impact of that sky in it in placing the horizon line high so that we can bring more of these interesting elements in the mid and foreground into the photograph and kind of cut out some of that uh, wasted unused space in the top. Yeah, so really nice on, on that. And this is another good example of doing what we've just talked about. We've placed that horizon line high in the photograph, bringing all that, all of these cool uh, textural elements from the sand dunes prominently into the photograph. Um, nice capture. Yeah, so Roy did a good job. You know, here again, we've kind of not, not much happening in the sky, so we have just enough of it. But, you know, capturing the, the patterns, the uh, shadows, I mean, just a lot... We've got this leading line that's kind of created here that's taking us through the photo again. So utilizing a lot of different compositional elements there. Yeah, nice Ooh, job by really Roy nice. Goldsbury. And get rid of that. Oops. <laughs> uh, Richie also utilized the horizon line at the top so that we've got this interesting foreground of a field. A um, lot, lot of neat textures uh, with the light kind of highlighting a lot of that different color and texture. 
That's really neat. Yeah. Beautiful photograph. So you might even say, well, he's got this interesting sky, and, you know, we don't really know what was above that, but this part of the sky is interesting, and he's included that. But I think putting this down here was something that he wanted to focus on, and that's why he chose putting the horizon where it was. So good yeah. job. Yeah, in this case, the the sky serves as more of a background element to the field he's capturing. Yeah, exactly. And this is a, in this one, Daphne has placed the horizon line across the middle of the photo photograph. And in this, we're balancing out different aspects of it and different elements. We've got that textured sky there that brings a lot of interest. We've got the, the ocean with the waves. And then we've got the subject of the photograph, this building with the path moving up into it, placed prominently right in the center of the um, of the image. So everything is just balanced and centered in this image. Yeah, so a horizon line on the on in, right in the middle is exactly what was needed for this scenario that she found. So really nice. You know, this leading line leading us through and out to the scene. Just lots of really neat elements there. Yeah. And then uh, we've got James Caro who, um, when you have a, an amazing reflection scene, putting the horizon right in the middle allows you to have what the actual you know subject is and then the perfect reflection down below uh, that's a this is a perfect example of when to use um, a horizon line in the middle of your image and one thing that's cool about his technique in this one is that he's placed that horizon line in the middle but he's edged it down to the to the lower part of the photograph just a little bit which brings more of the actual scene in and makes it a little more prominent over the reflection so it helps to the establish the difference and the prominence of the reality over the the reflection yeah so nice technique really nice it. and utilizing kind of a rule of thirds technique where you're use, putting things more on the left side um you know is really nice and pleasing as well so a lot of good elements there and then here's another example of placing the horizon line kind of along the middle. And, and here, um, James Griffin has done this to, to place, to balance out the, the awesome sky that he's trying to capture as well as these awesome foreground elements in it. But in placing it slightly low in the center, he's placing the infinite emphasis and the dominance of that sky in the photograph. And so that makes it more prominent and draws your eye directly to the sky as well. And then we've got a few where you kind of need to determine where what the scene is doing and you place that horizon, you know, where it needs to be. So we've shown you examples of, you know, a high horizon, a low horizon in the middle. And sometimes that horizon needs to be kind of in between. Uh, and here's one where Alfredo uh, put that there. Um, and it was perfect because we've got just enough of this, you know, what we needed to have this amazing uh, backlit foliage there. Um, just enough, and that's where the horizon needed to be in order to have, you know, this element kind of be that focal on that side with the sunset in the background. Yeah. So. Very nice. Yeah. And this is a very dramatic uh, capture. Um, by Daniel Garcia and it's another example where um, the horizon line may not necessarily be placed in exactly the top the bottom or right in the middle but it's placed in a strategic position within the scene to to capture the perspective and the elements of the scene that he needed to to create this really interesting uh, dramatic image yeah uh, lots of things going on where we've got this perspective, a leading line happening, um, we've got movement, you know, a lot of compositional elements. And like Dave said, he strategically put things where he needed it to, to capture what he wanted. Um, and it works. Terrific. And then this one with Jeff Hall, um, you know, we've got this uh, awesome silhouette that tells a story of what's happening. Um, We've got these people also, it looks like, you know, it's a, an adult with a, a child kind of having fun out there. And then we've got the sun and, you know, this beam lighting down. So we've got quite a few different elements in there and he's put them where he wanted them to 
make the composition work for him. Yeah. And this is really cool. Um, in setting, in composing your scenes and composing your subjects, uh, working in numbers of three or odd numbers makes the, the photograph more interesting and uh, it helps the viewer to move through it. And in this, we've got these three elements, this child here in the foreground, we've got the action over to the right with this adult and child going on in the waves, and then the sun in the background. So it's a nice uh, triangle that's created within the scene here. And that helps to create a, a feeling of balance and it helps to draw the viewer into the scene and to create interest within the viewer. Yeah, and I think where he placed this horizon was just perfect because he wanted just enough of the sun and just enough of this subject. And so, you know, sometimes that horizon isn't exactly in one of those three locations, either the top, bottom, middle. Yeah, and in this case, it, it works really well and is placed very well to create that yeah. nice, that symmetry. Yeah. And this one with Jan Irons, um, you know, it's hard to see the horizon. You don't have that straight line like you do, you know, in some of the places. And so uh, she's utilized different things in the scene to help make sure that it is level. Because that is one thing as uh, when you're taking your photo, you want those horizons to be level so that the viewer doesn't have to tilt their head to make sure that things are straight. Um, so finding things in the scene to help do that is, um, you know, good as well. Yeah, and the cool thing about this is that the elements of the scene actually create the feeling of the horizon within the viewer. So in looking at it, you feel the natural effect of where the horizon is. Yeah, and you know, we've kind of talked about other things. She's, she's got a good foreground, you know, this midground, the sky's background, making it kind of seem like a 3D depth um, photo, leading line. So really nice elements composing that scene. Yeah. And then here again um, is another example of just placing your horizon line within the photograph to accommodate all of the elements that you want to include in it. Um, you've got a very nicely balanced sky, nicely balanced foreground, and then some really nice mid-ground elements that draw you right into the subject of the photograph. Yeah, and William chose to, you know, use rule of thirds to put the subject here. We've got leading lines that take us there. So again, a lot of different elements that, you know, have combined to make a really good photo. Yeah. So uh, that's it for um, Horizon Line. Um, like we said, we have weekly challenges in our group. And when we um, review at the end of the week, our photo reviews are similar to what we just did, where we talk about the compositional elements and... Um, our people really like them and uh, they say that you, they learn a lot. So if that's something that interests you, come join us and we'll see you then. And if not, we will have all sorts of links down below for the other videos we have in the series and um, how to join the group. And we'll see you next time. See you guys.